Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining this session. Uh, today, uh, Nikita Kostin uh, from the uh, Alto Robot Learning Lab will present uh, a very recent uh, DeepMind paper about learning and planning. Uh, Nikita is a, a PhD student uh, at, our, uh, at our lab and uh, yeah, well, that's it. Nikita, you can, you can begin. Yeah, thank you very much for the, for the introduction. <clears throat> so um, today I'm planning to present a paper, which is um, an extension of uh, pretty recent Musero paper for uh, uh, complex action spaces. Let us begin. So the outline of my talk is the following. So uh, first I will introduce the general problem that we're trying to solve. And then I will uh, uh, talk a little bit about the Monte Carlo research uh, in case if uh, some, somebody don't know it. Uh, and then uh, I will talk about the Mu Zero architecture since the paper I'm talking about is uh, uh, hardly based on Mu Zero architecture and the made just a, a small changes to it to be applicable to continuous action spaces and we will talk then about the results so the history of deep mind works they are the following so um the first paper uh, was published in 2016 and it was uh, the the uh, the very famous paper um that was uh <clears throat> actually beat it uh, the uh, current uh, world champion in go uh, and uh, yeah it was very successful at that point but it was very uh, restricted in many in many ways and so the fall the next few papers they uh, they made several uh, adjustments to the base uh, algorithm so that it uh, be become more and more, uh, more, more uni universal. So the, the problem that we're, we're trying to solve here is reinforcement learning problem. And uh, basically here we are, um, we are in MDP, which, which consists of a uh, set of states. Uh, it could be either discrete or continuous set of actions. Um, that could be either discrete or continuous as well. But we uh, in mu zero we assume it to be a discrete, and then we will uh, uh, get rid of this limitation later. And uh, uh, the transition probability distribution, which is actually the distribution over next states uh, given the current state and action, and of course the reward signal, which uh, uh, shows uh, how how well uh, did we do and our goal is to find the policy which is actually actually a mapping from states to actions uh, which uh, brings uh, the maximum to the uh, uh, to the sum of expect uh, to the expected sum of rewards uh, uh, along the trajectory and the, like the initial distribution is uh, usually also uh, like initial state is also sampled from some initial distribution. Um, yeah, so just skip this. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, after state setting up a problem, let let's try to uh, imagine one way to solve it, and this way could be a Monte Carlo tree search. The Monte Carlo tree search is a, a iterative procedure which uh, consists of, of four phases selection phase, expansion phase, simulation phase, and back propagation phase. Uh, I will talk about uh, each of them in, in details later, but uh, the, the, <clears throat> the whole picture is that we, using this iterative process, we are trying to build uh, some kind of a uh, tree representation of our decisions. And then we will follow the path. Uh, yeah, and we, we will also track the rewards that we get uh, by picking each node. And then after, after 
after building the entire tree, uh, we get, could easily decide, uh, we could easily extract the best policy, the optimal policy that I talked about before, uh, to be to maximize each time we will iterate over the children of each node and we'll, we will just pick uh, the best uh, node according to its value. And yeah, that's that's it. So, and this procedure will lead us to uh, to the uh, building the, the whole tree. So the selection phase. Uh, in this phase, we are actually trying to reach the leaf node. Um, so uh, actually, this is uh, the uh, the stopping criteria of this procedure. So if we will uh, reach either the, the limit of uh, iterations or if we will uh, reach the uh, uh, the leaf node which is uh, uh, saying that the environment is done uh, for example we could reach the uh, the number of uh, steps in the environment that we are allowed to, to take and uh, yeah so uh, in this phase we we just uh, iteratively uh, picking the best child among the childs of of current nodes. So, for example, in this node, we would just uh, ask for uh, the best child. So, we will ask for the set of childs of this node, and then just iter iteratively uh, choose the one that has the biggest uh, value. And yeah, and we will just return this node and then proceed until we reach the node that, that is leaf. Uh, what I mean is that it has no children's children. Yeah, and uh, then the, sele the selection phase uh, re requires us to define the procedure of picking the best uh, child among the, the child, among the children of, of this node. And uh, usually it is done by defining the upper confidence bound uh, uh, style. So uh, here we are basically uh, just have uh, the values of, uh, of the children of uh, the current node and also some kind of exploration bonus where uh, C is the constant that we usually fine tune to to uh, <clears throat> to make exploration versus exploitation um, efficient and uh, yeah here the uh, capital N I is the number of times we, we visited the current node uh, and the small N I is the number of times we visited uh, this particular child that we are uh, considering right now. In the expansion phase, we are trying to add new nodes to the tree, and uh, yeah, in in this phase, this is actually where we need. Uh, this this is the first time where, where, when we need the dynamics of the model. So if we reach the node that has no children, uh, then we need to uh, add new nodes. So the the children of the current node, we need to add. Uh, these children and uh, each child uh, um, is is appeared uh, with the process of uh, executing the dynamics model with each so we are just executing uh, for each possible um, action from that state so we we actually need, need to know this we we will execute our dynamics model so imagine that we have it and yeah, and we will set the state of this node to be as prime, and then proceed with with further actions. Yeah, and then uh, at the end of this procedure, we will just return the best node among the children of this node. But since they they are unexplored yet, so usually we just return the random. Yeah, the simulation phase is uh, is like the, the 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 bottleneck of this process since we need to uh, execute actions from some default policy until we will reach the um, the end 
of the episode. So uh, I'm, I, I, I'm calling it the done flag. So, so when the done flag is on, since like if you would program this, uh, you, you, will, you will just uh, track this done. And uh, yeah, after, after uh, executing an action and receiving the next state and the reward, so we, we are actually also assuming here that we have a reward model. We would then uh, just summing all the reward along this uh, path that we sampled and return this reward. And uh, this is actually where Monte Carlo uh, notion is coming in. So Monte Carlo means that we are we are just estimating the random value uh, of the goodness of that node. So we want to know how good this node is, and we are just uh, hoping that this node this value, the goodness of that node could be estimated with just one, the single sample estimate. And this is actually what we're doing here. The back propagation phase, uh, it's very, very simple. We, we just back propagate the reward that we get to, uh, to make sure that the, the nodes that, that are that, that are located above are also included uh, the, the value that we received here. So if we received here a, a, a reward of 50, then this value would receive reward of 50 plus its previous value. So if we would then uh, return to this node again, we would know that yeah, so before before we, we went uh, right and we received the reward 50. So we, we, we need to know that this node is, the, the value of this node should be uh, the value of its best child, of, of, of its just the sum of its children. And we, we, we need to know that in order to make better decisions in the beginning. So uh, since we end up with Monte Carlo research, are there any questions so far? Okay, uh, let's let's continue with new zero architecture. <clears throat> so yeah, as I mentioned before, our bottleneck is our the simulation phase. Since in many environments, uh, we need to actually wait for to end and for example in card poll this is not the case since the poll could just fell fell down very very quickly and we very quickly understand that some some um, area of the tree is uh, uh, it, it doesn't worth to be explored but in some environments for example in robotics environments this is not the case and we we could uh, do some very bad stuff that, that won't lead us to uh, regions of high rewards. And uh, yeah, we will still need to wait for, for the simulation phase to finish. And yeah, that's, that's, very, very, it, that, that's the problem. Uh, how to deal with that? Uh, so the, the, the solution is to bootstrap the search. What does it mean? It means that we need to, uh, to, to have some kind of a value estimator that could uh, uh, give us the value of some node without doing any simulation stuff in the in the actual environment and yeah it, it's just the value network the value network is uh, usually implemented as just a uh, conventional neural network that takes the state as an input and returns the scalar value which is which shows uh, how good this node is we will see later how to train this network, but the conceptual view is that it it allows us to avoid the simulation at all, and we can just uh, uh, reach some some depth of the tree that that is actually a hyperparameter. Here, depth is one and two, like depth is two. So at the depth two, we are just bootstrapping the the tree, and yeah, after after executing. So, like and also we could collect these states that we have here 
and uh, like stack them together, put them in value network and receive the vector of values. Uh, so it's just very efficient with modern GPUs. And then we will just assign the values of uh, each node to be the output of the value network and do the backpropagation phase. Very easy. Yeah, so in real world, we actually don't have the, the, the function f, which gives us the next state. So only, only board games are very easy to, to define this, the, this function since they are deterministic and yeah, fully observable, very predictable, not very predictable, absolutely predictable. Uh, in real world, we actually need to learn this function. And to learn this function, we could uh, to approximate it actually. Uh, to do that, we could uh, <clears throat> we could use uh, some kind of uh, function g, which is parameterized by parameter theta, and uh, we could ask it for the next state in in the next reward in a way that we will input this current state in action if we are here this state and the action that we we uh, execute it and yeah it, it will return the next state and the reward yeah and uh, the the other limitation that uh, uh, conventional mcts has it's uh, that the states are usually uh, uh, yeah, they could be actually images, but it's very hard to deal with the situation when we we need to uh, when we need to build this function g to take the state as an input and output also the 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 image. It's it's very very uh, computationally inefficient. To avoid this, we also could add the uh, uh, encoder which will encode our image observation into some low dimensional state representation and we can use uh, we, we can train our uh, dynamics to predict uh, to also predict uh, not image but the uh, this low the, the state in this uh, low dimensional state space not in the uh, observation space yeah and mu zero the um, also used the the um, the stacked uh, version of observations. So they they used last uh, several last observations to uh, acquire more information from observations because you know tarot games where uh, image to image where images are not changing very much from uh, time to time. Yeah, to capture some global uh, context, like where the ball is moving or something else, you need to use several durations. Yeah, and uh, let's imagine that we have built this tree already. So it, it's just given to us. What could be uh, then the, um, the procedure of executing actions in the environment so basically mu zero uh, uses the mpc style of uh, planning where it plans for 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 some horizon and then uh, executes just for the, just the first action and receive the the the, uh, the actual reward and then uh, builds the new tree from scratch without without uh, in, in anything no, not just without anything, but now let's assume that, that we don't have anything to build a new tree. And then uh, this procedure repeats again and again. In, in this way, we could avoid the problem of, uh, of the case when our dynamics is uh, uh, non-deterministic. So if, if our G function is not deterministic, then uh, after executing this action in this state uh, the second time, we like in, in in theory we can get a uh, different state from from this state and uh, to like avoid this uh the mpc mpc 
style of planning could easily avoid this because we uh, can plan this one time, execute one action and plan again. So we just don't face this stochasticity of the environment. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I've told before uh, about the uh, selection phase rule. Uh, the mu zero they used more uh, more complicated uh, formula for picking the best action. Here, uh, this pi s of a. Uh, it, this is actually the output of the. Uh, so this is this p uh, upper subscript zero. This is actually the uh, the distribution over actions. In in this quick case is like a histogram with a number of bins equal to number of actions available in that state, and uh, it it plays the role of a prior for picking the action. A. So, for example, if we would uh, neglect this term, then we, we will act greedily uh, and uh, we will pick the node with the best, the best value in principle. But then to uh, like first introduce uh, exploration into our model and second, um, if we all already know something about uh, the goodness of some action like not the goodness but uh, i would say the rule so if we if so, so somebody told us a rule uh, of uh, how, of which action to pick in some state then we could use this information as a prior to some kind of guide uh, this selection rule to be a little bit biased towards what what we think the best action could be well, we will see this this is very important term since uh, sample mu zero is actually modifying exactly this one. Yeah, and here uh, the sli slightly different notation. So uh, capital N of S and A, this is number of times we visited. Um, so they in mu zero, they, they uh, we talked more about edges, not the nodes. So um, let me explain it more carefully. So if we would uh, uh, think that uh, we are in state S and we are picking action A and we want to know what that is, the, the denominator. This is the number of times we visited this state. But since we might have a deterministic dynamics, we are thinking that how many times did we uh, uh, did we take action A? So actually, like the the H, not like the number of visits of that particular state, but in general, how many times did we take action A in state S? And uh, in numerator, there is a there is a quantity which is just the sum so the number of times we in principle we visit we visited status and yeah, that's it yeah and this constants c1 and c2 i will define them later they they i think they are fixed for both uh, uh mu zero and sample mu zero but yeah they i think they tuned them empirically yeah the back propagation phase this is this is actually very interesting uh, because before we had just uh, uh, undiscounted For example, we are here, so k equals to three. Like, like, uh, let's begin from from here. So, 
from from mm, yeah that's very difficult to explain for me mm, the, if we are uh, receiving so imagine that we receive the output of the uh, value network and we want to back propagate this value all the way to the root node to do that um, we multiply our value with uh, the gamma factor with the power corresponds to the depth of the tree and uh, to, to to say which which reward we were, which which update of the value for that node would be we will also see in what uh, we would also record the rewards along this trajectory since each time we execute the, uh, the, the function g we will also receive uh, reward and then after after that we would uh, uh, multiply this reward with uh, with gamma factor but uh, it's just like in the reverse reverse order so we're not trying we're not um like predicting from the reward from here so imagine that we are we are starting from that node and want to back propagate and step return all the way up till the the root node yeah and from for for that node the, this would be gamma times the reward and that that we received in that state and so on i hope i explained it yeah let's let's move on so the training that's for me that was the most interesting part when i when i, when I read the paper because yeah the procedure is good okay great but i'll have to train this uh, the training is actually done very uh, uh, observations, actions, and rewards in the real environment. Here, you subscripts uh, denotes the reward in the real environment, and R subscripts, upper subscripts, uh, denotes. Um, the rewards in the uh, like this imaginary trajectory and uh, after uh, like after uh, storing these trajectories in, in the replay buffer we would uh, uh, sample a um, sample some trajectory and also sample the time step in that trajectory and we will unroll uh the trajectory from this time from this time step for some kind some number of time steps it's just k and uh, then we will align these trajectories in a way that uh, we will we we take the first observation of that trajectory and use encoder uh to encode it into the hidden state representation then we will use function f to predict the uh, probability distribution over actions and the value. Then we will use the function g to predict the next state in the, in the reward. And like which action we will choose to, um, to be inputted in, in this g. But the, actually we have this action in our replay buffer. So we will use this action and yeah, and then just proceed with it for king time steps. And then after doing this, uh, we would uh, calculate our losses. Let's begin from uh, policy loss. So as we talked before during the inference, uh, we believe 
that this action A that was executed in the environment is the result of uh, completing the tree search. And we believe that this action is optimal in the way that it was, the out, it was outputted by the tree search procedure. And then we can just trust this procedure and uh, um, consider this action as optimal. Then this is our target. For whom this target is? For policy distribution. Since uh, like we have here a distribution of uh, actions and this is just one action, we can uh, encode this as one whole vector and do just cross entropy loss. Okay. Um, we, we, we managed to do uh, loss for policy. Then what about actions? Oh, no, 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 sorry. What about values? The values uh, should mimic the behavior of uh, real world. So we, we need to, uh, to, to have some labels from real world. And these labels could be uh, end step return again. And uh, since we have the trajectory, we could uh, uh, set n to some number. I don't remember the number from the paper, but I assume it's like five about that. And uh, yeah, we will just uh, construct uh, this uh, end step return and also use the value network to bootstrap this uh, end step return. And uh, I suppose we need to fix this value uh, when when we are uh, doing the creating descent. So like no moving target problem is appearing. And uh, they also suggested to use some transformation of reward, which is uh, like they used this only for Atari games, I assume. And uh, yeah, so anyway, it's like simply uh, also just a loss to value V here value, this value, this value, and this value to just mimic the end step return. That's it. And the reward, the reward is very easy since we also have these rewards along the trajectory that I mentioned before. We could ask uh, the reward predicted by the uh, by function G to mimic, so to be to be uh, very close to to the real reward, real rewards. But they also use this uh, transformation phi uh, on these rewards. Yeah, and what about G and H? How, how can we up, up, up update these parameters? But it is done with in in the end to end fashion in a way that if we have gradients uh here we would just back propagate them uh all the way to even update our uh encoder parameters so it's just, it is just a back propagation through time and uh, yeah of course uh, the gradients from different directions uh, could have the different magnitudes and you need to scale them very uh, properly. But uh, yeah, in the paper, the, there there is uh, a little bit about scaling. So I, I think that is done just empirically. Yeah, so before, before I, I have uh, not, not that much about sample mu zero, since I, I consider the changes not that uh, um, much. So uh, are there any questions about user architecture yet? Yeah, I have one question. Uh, so, so you said that they use an autoencoder to, to encode the state observations, but even, even using an autoencoder, I would assume that the branching factor would be still pretty high for, for this great environment, at least. Is that right? Yeah, not out encoder, just encoder. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, is... yeah, yeah, encoder. Yeah, but I mean, for example, if you if we reduce the dimensionality of the states, for example, from a thousand to, I don't know, 20, uh, you would still uh, 
have a high branching factor because those are like continuous features, right? Uh, you, you mean that um, the branching factor in, in the way of like they, they, they are here assuming that this, this G is deterministic. So there is actually no branching factor in the states. Yeah, I mean, in actions. No, when you're building a tree, the search tree, so, so you need to uh, test different actions and then you would go to the next level and then you would repeat the same process. Is that right? Yes, yes. So, so how, many, how many nodes do you build per level? Then, then, uh, then... The, it, it, it equals um, to the amount of action that, uh, that is available. So if we are in this state, we are building the same amount of nodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yes, sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I have a question. Why does it need uh, reverse transformations and how does it, how is it defined? Yeah, that's, that's uh, the question. I don't, don't know the answer. So this is actually some function of, uh, of the reward with uh, uh, with some sign function and uh, some other stuff the, the the intuition is that it somehow improves the speed of learning i think uh, and uh, so it it was uh it was used just in atari games um, okay. I, i've never seen that before and after <laughs> But uh, may, may, maybe if I would use that in my implementations of the algorithm for Atari games, that would also uh, improve the performance. It's just, I think, a hacking of the environment. But anyway, it's uh, not, not that handcrafted. I mean, it's uh, some function that we apply. We are allowed to apply any functions to, to the reward. Why not? The problem is that in the real world, we usually don't have so much experiments to uh, to know this this function, but anyway, it it, it improves the performance. It, it was the result of not the mu zero paper, but the other paper. So I, I actually I didn't cite it, but I yeah I I will modify the presentation so so that the reference to these uh, modifications would be available. Okay, so let let's. Uh, move on and uh, so in case we have uh, a discrete um, discrete action space uh, the, the, the this arg max that we had before I'm sorry for dropping but uh, yes this arg max is taken with the respect to so yeah as I mean uh, ask, asked uh, at each level we are adding the amount of nodes uh, equals to the number of functions that uh, is available to us at that state. But what if uh, what, what if uh, the number of actions that are available to us is like infinite? It, what if the, the number of uh, action, the, so the, the action space is continuous and uh, we could pick Float, float numbers for, for each dimension of the action. This is actually very similar to what we had to, in Q learning when we also need to take this R max. And uh, yeah, as, as in Q learning, one possible way uh, to be uh, sample some actions and explore those. Um, and so the, the main question is that uh, like how many actions should you sample and from which distribution you should sample it from. Um, yeah. So then like my naive approach, my naive idea was that I can just modify the, the, uh, the equation for picking the best action that we had in mu zero um, to be, like this, but uh, like on each level. So it's like the same equation that we had before, but here we are assuming that uh, we used this policy pi to sample us a set of actions. 
and we will explore, explore only those. Um, and it, it's just not that far from, from the truth, but uh, in a way that it's actually theoretically, uh, it, it's not uh, like proved that uh, you are allowed to, to, to do that. Mm. And uh, so actually the, what the sample Musura did is actually uh, putting the theoretical grounds <laughs> for doing that as far as I understand. So what's, what they uh, introduced is that they uh, uh, suggested to look at this uh, equation on the slide, this one uh, as a policy improvement step. What does it mean? It means that uh, we are, um, we have some prior on which action we would take in that state. And uh, we actually want to know, uh, like having, having this uh, value of that uh, action in that state, what our, uh, be what our beliefs, what, what, what would, would we decide uh, the actual action to be if we would know the Q value and the prior. And uh, like, it would be good if uh, our updated policy, we call this I pi, uh, it would have the value um, bigger than the value of old policy of unupdated policy for each state. And they introduced, um, like it, it, it wasn't their idea, but uh, so they, 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 they began to consider kind of uh, operator view of updating the policy. And uh, in this operator view, um, each, almost each algorithm as far as I understand uh, has its own uh, improvement policy improvement operator. And uh, they introduced a sample based policy improvement operator in the following fashion. So they uh, suggested to use a proposal distribution beta and its empirical uh, distribution beta hat to like, and, and they, they used this ratio um, to introduce a sample based policy improvement <laughs> operator. And they showed that uh, it actually converges um, to the, um, to the non-sample based policy improvement operator as the number of samples uh, goes to infinity, which is actually, uh, they, they, they showed this theoretically with several theorems, but it's, uh, it, it sounds very logical. I mean, uh, if we would uh, uh, sample some uh, actions from proposal distribution beta, then uh, as, we, as, as more samples we would sample, the closer beta hat would be to beta. And then this ratio would be equal to one. And then we will just be approaching this value. Uh, what, what, what Z is, uh, it, it's just here, it uh, doesn't matter that much. And uh, so the change that they suggested is like the, the action that we will pick at each selection phase of uh, um, of the selection phase, is that uh, it is proportional to the following distribution. So the proposal distribution, so the ratio that we had before times our prior that we have. This is this prior is actually the output of the policy network, the of the f function. Sorry to to jump between slides but this this is this p is is, is exactly what uh, pi of a given of a of sa means here 
I have a question. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I will. I will speed up. Um, so, yeah, as yeah, as, as I mentioned before, B is proposal, beta is proposal, proposal, proposal distribution, beta hat is empirical distribution of that beta, and uh, yeah. So if we would do that, and they they actually suggested to use. Uh, as a proposal proposal distribution, they suggested to use pi. Then, uh, as far as I understand, these things are cancelled out, and we just have our policy distribution that we had before. But uh, yeah, we just will sample a couple of functions, k, which they set to to twenty in their experiments, and. Uh, uh, this says just uh, like the formula as before, but but with like very theoretically grounded. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, after after uh, completing the the search in the tree, we we have a, a output policy to ex to be executed in the environment. Uh, as just uh, uh, count distribution in the root node. So we will just see how many times did we uh, take some action compared to the overall number of times that we ever take an action during that search duration. And yeah, this distribution, we could just sample an action from it and proceed. Yeah, so. Uh, let's quickly move to the results. They are very interesting. Uh, here are the results of a uh, uh, regional New Zero paper where the yellow line is, uh, the orange line is uh, alpha zero, and the blue line is mu zero. And yeah, as you can see, the performance in the uh, board games domain are equal or even greater. Like, um, but remember that we we don't have the the environment model, like alpha alpha zero does have it. We don't. We learned it, and we anyway are doing very good. Uh, yeah, here it is the the plot of uh, performance comparison, and also the number of uh, simulations. What does it mean? Number of simulations. It's how many um, simulations did we do in the uh, like remember, we have an MPC uh, kind of planning, and each time in MPC we need to to do the simulations to uh, get this tree, and then execute the first action of of the tree. And yeah, here the plot of uh, different number of uh, simulation iterations in in uh, in that in that tree, and as you can see. Even at ten, yeah, even even at seven simulations per duration would enough for Mr. Patman to to solve it. Pretty 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 good, compare comparing to the uh, greater number of simulations. Uh, yeah, here is, um, yeah, I think we don't have much time. Yeah, the samples measure. The results are much more interesting. So um, here we have a, a comparison of number of actions that we sample and then explore it. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, uh, like three samples. So uh, like we are in some, some state and we need to decide how many actions would we sample from our policy. And then uh, we can explore these actions um, and proceed with, with, with the tree search. And uh, as initially, Mr. Packman has six, uh, 18 actions. So action space is uh, 18, the 18 dimensional discrete action space. And uh, like only three actions is pretty good enough to have a very good performance. This is actually very amazing. 
and uh, yeah here the result of uh, of uh, the same uh, experiment but for game of go yeah and here is very interesting that 15 actions and at some state is not that bad but uh, in, like if if you remember the game of go the number of actions in, in each state for on each board is like i don't know <laughs> 200 i think 200 is yeah about that so and 15 would be not that good and not that bad to 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 be executed uh yeah this is the comparison uh with uh, with state of the art control algorithms on continuous control yeah and as you can see yeah sometimes uh, sampled in zero uh, performed even even, even better um, yeah that's also very interesting plot comparison since uh, we could uh, like the previous experiments as far as i understand they used um, states like uh, on, uh, like the states that are corresponds to the uh, current uh, simulator position but uh, uh, original mu zero it was uh, stated that it was applied to even uh, work with images and Atari games are, are the, the, the example. And for continuous control with images, the performance is not that good. Yeah, but uh, it's hard to expect much from, from this paper <laughs> since it, it's already uh, extended new zero for continuous control, then yeah, needs more improvements. And uh, yeah, the, the interesting thing is that uh, uh, they used the neural network that they used as, as a policy they picked a categorical neural network in a way that they uh, divided uh, each dimension of the action into seven bins and yeah predicted uh, each bin separately it was a very interesting decision for me i've never seen that before and yeah they compared it with uh, uh, conventional uh, continuous Gaussian distribution and uh, yeah surprisingly but it's not that obvious so for me if would someone ask me about this experiment I would definitely say that the Gaussian should outperform the categorical but turns out to be not yeah so um I think I, I managed to, to to be one in one hour so here are some references and uh, yeah, I will, I will add here a couple more. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Nikita. I guess we can we can spend a few minutes on the questions. Uh, so is there any anyone who wants to ask? Hi, Nikita, Nik thanks for the presentation. I have a question about the sample the mu zero. Sure. Uh, in the sample mu zero, uh, for the inner policy improvement uh, step, did they, I mean, how do they use the uh, mu zero real analysis uh, method to, to improve the policy? Uh, I mean, because in, uh, in mu zero, I mean, in the original mu zero, the, uh, when learning the policy and value function, uh, they actually kind of similar to the, um, let's say, the, uh, the uh, let's say, the, the imitation learning because you kind of try to use the yes, yes, imitating exactly. the tracers to read out. Exactly, um, exactly. It is, yeah, it is. Yeah, but in uh, in the sample uh Mizero, did they still just uh, mimic the uh uh read out in replay buffer or they kind of similar to Mizero real analysis, they uh calculate all the policy and also the after that, uh, I mean, the, I mean, they improve the policy uh, using, uh, uh, re, uh, I mean, using a route of the fly. Hmm, yeah, it's a very interesting question. Um, I, I, I'm not, not uh, I, I don't want to, to, to be incorrect, but uh, the, the, the paper, uh, as, as, as after reading the paper, I understood that 
I think that the only change that they made uh, is that this, so so the 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 source of beta distribution. So if you won't set it to pi, or you would set it to pi with some noise, so these terms won't cancel, and then you have a little bit of uh, exploration and kind of regularization to the prior. So if so, so the prior won't pay much of um, uh, yeah, and uh, so so the question how how do do they train this network? I think I think so. I, I I've I've never seen in, in anything different from mu zero and sample mu zero. So I suppose that they they use the same um, the same so so same kind of imitation learning uh, style learning the policy but i'm yeah i'm not sure i need to check it mm. yeah yeah thanks uh, and also another question is of uh, for the uh, proportion, proportional distribution data if we i mean if we want using the current policy instead we want to using let's say a i mean a uniform distribution that can give us more a broader support uh, I mean, in this case, how, how should we calculate this? Uh, I, mean, I mean, the policy, because in this case, we can't directly cancel out the pi. Uh, I think that, uh, so, in, in, in case of better being uniform distribution, like we have uh, access to the pi, right? Yeah, it's just our network that we could call uh, and get the the probability here, and we could um, this beta would be just uh, just just a probability according to the PDF of uniform distribution, and uh, we could also sample from uniform distribution and get some probabilities. But in case of uniform distribution, I guess this beta and beta hat would cancel out. Yeah. Um, really? Because if you, I mean, if, uh, because of uh, beta hat is a empirical distribution, for example, in, uh, if you, let's say, if, if you have a uniform distribution and you sample uh, 20 different uh, actions from this distribution. So, so in this case, um, what will be the uh, uh, the empirical, empirical distribution of one sampled action? Is this the, uh, let's say, for example, if you uh, uniform distribution have the I mean, it range from minus minus one to to one. So, uh, the distribution. Of, I mean, I mean, the density will be one over two. So, uh, but in if you sample twenty actions from this distribution, uh, the act the probability of each sample will be still uh one over two or one over twenty. Yeah, I think I think that the the the, the later this like I mean, uh, if you sample from, uh, like empirical distribution of uniform and, uh, um, like it should be the same. I mean, it's like it's, seems to be so. Like yeah, for example, if you have twenty actions and you 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 want to. That's a, like in, in, in the uniform distribution, I don't, don't understand how to deal with like the definition of support. I mean, we should have this information uh, a priori. So to, to choose the support to, uh, to be equal to the support of real actions that we that we can directly to the action uh, range. For example, if you 
the, the range of the action is from minus one to one, which is kind of a common case in uh in deep mind control state environment. So in this case, yeah, we can yeah. directly range from minus one to one. Yeah. So uh, here, I think that uh, if the sample uh, action is coming from beta distribution, then uh, uh, Yeah, it, it, it should it should come yeah from um, yeah and another question is how can we uh, so yeah uh, this uh, sample should come from uh, from beta distribution to build the beta hard distribution as an empirical distribution of beta and then we will just evaluate our policy at those samples and uh, and in that case our uh, our beta should uh, cancel out because the the values of beta hat and beta ah they not they're not the same like what, what am i thinking of yeah, they are different. So beta would have much slower variance, much, much, much lower values than, than beta hot. Exactly. Uh, right. So if, if, if uh, beta would have like one, one over K value for any, any action, if, if we, if we are doing, uh, if we're evaluating AI and beta would have one over the support yeah so it is it could be mm, one half i suppose yeah but yeah but anyway i i think it would be good to uh implement this to understand it better so uh, from from the paper i i honestly i don't understand that much about what exactly this change is. So yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm trying to, to explain my feelings. So I I, I was reading the paper and then at some point I, I faced the, the statement that yeah we we said better to be equal to pi, and then I I just stuck in a way that why I mean what's what's the uh, what's the purpose of that. I mean, I mean, we're just canceling out and we have beta hat, which is actually pi hat, which in, 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 in case of uh, our algorithm is, yeah, we're just sampling from pi and yeah, constructing the empirical distribution of pi. Yeah, and that's actually what, what I uh, initially thinking of. Yeah. yeah, I guess the sample from K is because, uh, I mean, because some of the pi is your current best guess of the uh, policy in current state. So if you want to kind of, uh, let's, let's say if you have a prior of the pi, so if you want to save uh, samples, so the best, best case will be just directly sample from it. Uh, it. It should be kind of similar to, uh, let's say, um, MPO, where you also directly sample from current policy pi. Um, I mean, of course, you can try try to add some noise into samples, try to make it uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little, I mean, I mean, a little bit diverse. So, yeah, but if you let's if you have this that prior over over pi, it's I guess it's a better case. It just directly sample from it because it's a. Uh, I mean, it's a uh, best guess you can have at the current state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. I, I... Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, I don't have more questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Amar is also asked if you can share the slides. I guess you can just do it on Slack. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are already 10 minutes over time. So I guess we can stop the session now. Uh, thank you and see you in the next session. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye.